Hi, this is James from iRota, and today we're going to be talking about through-hole soldering. Now, when I talk about through-hole soldering, I'm referring to a specific type of soldering that you'd be doing with uh, a printed circuit board, and uh, through-hole actually just refers to the type of components that you'd be using. Now, in this video, I'll be using the iRota Pro 25L cordless soldering iron. Now, soldering through-hole components in circuit boards tends to be something that people feel a bit intimidated to try, but I will just say this, it is super easy. Now over here, we're just gonna go ahead and just do this resistor really quickly. Um, so we're just gonna pop that guy over here. So the type of resistors that this particular project uses are just your standard quarter watt and um, they're pretty tight. So I'm gonna bend the lead right at the end of that resistor and it's pretty easy you just pop that guy in like so and then I will bend the legs on the other side just to hold it down and um, this is the easy part you just put a little bit of solder on the tip and you just don't need that much and just let it flow down So let's take a close look. Now, if you notice, my soldering iron is on the other side of the lead and I just feed in just a little bit of solder and let it go down a little bit more so I can get a good joint. And that's really all there is to it. Now, it looks like I accidentally filled uh, one of the, the holes over there and uh, let's clean that up. Now to clean up that hole, I will use something called a solder braid and it's a, necessary tool for through hole soldering in my opinion and what you do is you just heat up, heat it up with the tip of your soldering iron and the solder will flow up the solder braid and it just sucks all of that solder out okay so let's take a look at what a bad solder joint looks like and the way that a bad solder joint would happen is if your iron wasn't hot enough you can just see that we're struggling to get any uh, good solder flow happening. It's just sticking to the, the lead of the particular component and it's just not flowing down inside of that through hole. And um, you know, when you take a close look at it, it, it never actually made a good connection. Now, when you look at the other joints that have been soldered on this um, component, um, you see a, a nice, tent that formed on each of the legs of this component and it's really just this one side that doesn't have that and that's just because that solder just didn't flow down that through hole so just a quick review when you're soldering a through hole component it's important that your soldering iron is at the proper temperature and all you're doing is you're just adding solder to the leg of the component. It doesn't go, you're not feeding the solder to the tip of the soldering iron. You're actually feeding the solder to the leg of the component. Once that component leg has been heated up, the, the solder will actually just flow into that through hole and you get a great connection with that. And it's pretty easy. Now the general rule of thumb is you will install your components from lowest height to the tallest component. And that's actually just to make things simple. So you'd start with your diodes, resistors, small capacitors, and you'd work your way up to taller and taller components. And um, you know, you also wanna be conscious that like, if you have certain components that they actually fit as well. So sometimes you might wanna change the order just to make sure things fit in properly. Now these are the components that you would probably wanna wait until the very end of your build to install. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. The main reason is you want to make sure that um, if your project has an enclosure, you wanna make sure you have the proper clearance for that and that you're not straining any of those parts. Also, if you plan on cleaning off the flux residue from your solder, um, you don't want that stuff getting inside of those components. Now today you don't have to wash the flux residue off of your printed circuit board after each soldering session. Uh, some of the older types of solder, uh, you would have to do that because it had a pretty strong acid and uh, it would damage your uh, 
components and the traces that were on the PCB. But uh, these days it's super easy. It's all no clean uh, for the most part. And um, the flux is embedded inside of the solder. So if you cut a piece of solder and you looked really closely with like a magnifying glass, you can actually see that flux embedded inside of it. Now these days you don't really need to buy flux separately if you're doing through hole. Uh, if you're doing SMD, type uh, work then yes you should probably buy some flux it usually comes in this tube and uh, it just really helps uh, soldering in SMD chips uh, stay away from these tins that have flux inside of it uh, it's mildly acidic and it will uh, slowly destroy the traces on your PCB okay let's talk about soldering in some integrated circuits into your project now some uh, IC chips will require you to use a socket and that's just because you can't solder in the chip itself because it's uh, heat sensitive um, So that's something you should be aware of if, it, if you're using like a, a digital project and the, the MPU or CPU will need to be socketed into that printed circuit board now some other projects, um, you might actually want to socket in all of your integrated circuits just because uh, it makes troubleshooting possibly a little bit easier. I tend not to like to do that just because uh, it's another point of failure. So if I, if I have a choice, I always like to solder my uh, IC chips directly into the PCB. Now that's a total personal preference and uh, there's a lot of people that will socket everything and uh, there's no right or wrong answer on that one. So this is my uh, method for soldering in integrated circuits into a printed circuit board. So what I like to do is just tack in two corners of the IC chip first. And the reason why I'd like to do this is in case I soldered it in crooked, it's actually really hard to kind of make it flat if you've actually soldered each one of those joints in. So if I accidentally did make it crooked, uh, what I can do is I can just heat up one joint and just push this, the IC chip up and it makes it straight again. And then after that, I can just go through and just clean up all of those joints and just uh, install that guy. Okay, so in this last section here, I just want to go over really quickly on some mechanical issues that you might run into. So over here we have a trimmer. It's a pretty common part and it's one of the parts that you should wait to last to install. Um, so my trick on these guys are very similar to the IC chips we just saw a second ago. And what I like to do is uh, make sure that it's in straight so it's not gonna be uh, crooked. And um, I just bend the legs a little bit and then I just tack in one leg of it. And then with my thumb, I push it up and then remelt that joint. And uh, then I double check and make sure it's completely flush with the, the printed circuit board. And then I'll go through and finish soldering in that part. So tack switches are something that you need to make sure that are completely flush with the printed circuit board. Now they snap in and uh, it's just really important to just really check to make sure that it is just lying flat on that board. And then other than that, it's, it's very simple. You know, you just solder it in and it's ready to go. So this is a cool method I came up with in order to install LEDs on a panel where I need it to be very aesthetically pleasing and the LEDs just fit perfectly with that panel. So they're just like nice and even. So I like to use these flat headed LEDs. Now the issue is, is there's really a tight tolerance. So you need to be very conscious of the height of the panel and even like a millimeter or half a millimeter kind of breaks that aesthetic. Now the trick is to install the hardware uh, on the panel so you get the right um, distance between the printed circuit board and where the LEDs will fit. And then I'll use this uh, painter's tape to stick on top of um, the holes where the LEDs poke out of the panel. And then I go ahead and just um, temporarily put in each one of the LEDs into the printed circuit board, but I do not solder them in yet. 
Now it's just a simple matter of just pushing each of the LEDs until it hits the top of the tape, at which point it just sticks to the tape. Um, so it's perfect. It, it lines up all the top of the LED to the panel. And all that's left to do at that point is solder in the LEDs. And what you end up with is just a very pleasing flat surface where the LEDs just come right up to the top of the panel and it just looks amazing. Well, that was a lot of fun. So soldering is really easy. You guys should go out and do it. Nothing to be afraid of. So uh, I'll be doing some more episodes soon. So hit like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time.